Cheers guys, Epix here. It's been a while since I've done my top VR games of all time, all platforms. So we're gonna raise the stakes a little bit. Instead of a measly five or 10, we're gonna have 20 of my top VR games, all time, all platforms. If you're wondering, does that include Oculus Go, Gear VR? No, sadly not the mobile platforms. I have a Gear VR, but not a phone to use it, and I do not have the Oculus Go. And well, Windows Mixed Reality units essentially use Steam VR for their catalog. So we're talking about the big three, PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, and HTC Vive. If you've seen my previous lists, you may be wondering which games have held on to their coveted spots and which have been kicked to the friggin' curb. Well, you'll find out. So grab a snack, guys, bevy of choice, sit back, chillax, Catch me on the VR flip side to find out. As someone with acrophobia, it's awesome to have a title where I can flex against that fear and not have to tremble five feet off the ground. I get all the exhilaration of climbing without the fear of pancaking into the ground at terminal velocity. But I need to say up front that the version of the climb on my top 20 VR games is the version that added Oculus Touch support. Pre-touch support, it was a fantastic looking game that constantly whispered the promise of what climbing could feel like in VR. With touch controller support, it's a fantastic looking game that delivers what climbing does feel like in VR. The touch controller makes it feel so natural and intuitive. If you need just one game to get what a track controller can offer VR, it's this game. Number 19, Rez, the musical rail shooter which first came out on Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 at the turn of the millennium. This is a game that takes the prototypical cyberpunk experience of jacking into the computer network and melds it with music. When you give yourself over to this game in pancake mode, it's pretty special. But in VR, guys, it is absolutely next level. Suddenly, you are actually jacked into the computer network and doing battles with enemy code. Number 18. A lot of my favorite VR experiences in games are ones that either re-inject life into old formulas or they do things just a bit different. Super Hot VR is in the latter category. The game uses stop time as its main gameplay mechanic. The more you move, the faster your enemies approach and react to you. Likewise, the slower you move, the slower your enemies move and react to you. The game uses a very simple but effective ethereal art style that ensures performance is fast and smooth no matter what your GPU. As we get to some of the higher ranked games, I'll talk more about my obsession with space. Suffice it to say, this game is the closest I've come in VR to convincingly feel I'm in an extremely low gravity environment. The game does this through a combination of amazing graphics and convincing physics. Movement in this game feels a bit tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, your sense of presence and immersion become that much stronger. You play the part of an AI android construct aboard a ship that is about to suffer a catastrophic event. From the game's amazing set pieces to its equally finely crafted NPC models, this is a title not to be missed. Carnage Chronicles is yet another polished indie VR offering. It's an action RPG that while not steeped in itemization or story like some deeper RPGs, has an absolutely amazing combat system. The future of VR combat is going to be amazing with localized hit zones so accurate, things like sword combat will essentially be indistinguishable from the real thing. Well, this game takes a step towards that future with enemy NPCs that not only dodge arrows and spells, they duck and will completely go cobalt on you by leading you into ambushes and other stealth attacks. The game's narration is top notch and the presentation is the cartoon style found in titles like World of Warcraft that ages well and more importantly performs fantastic on today's VR hardware. If you prefer your VR a bit more social, the added cooperative mode increases the experience by allowing you and up to three other buddies to play through the game gauntlet style. 
I've said it many times, this criminally underrated game passed under most people's radars, but not mine. This game, more than any other for me, takes the magic of the golden age of arcades, Sega's best rail shooters, and merges all of that into a VR cocktail of epic proportions. I dare you. Okay, screw that. I double dare you to play through each level on its most difficult and not bust a bead of sweat or be impressed. The main mechanic is bow and arrow and room scale to dodge, and you're gonna need it as enemies can appear in any space 360 degrees around you. An absolute treasure of a game if you loved games from the era of the golden age of arcade. Coming in at number 14, Doom 3 BFG. A word I talk about a lot with regards to VR gameplay is pacing, an often overlooked component of VR gaming. With the majority of VR still being tethered, a game that is paced too fast can break immersion as you step on and over your tether repeatedly. Pacing a game just right limits that and enhances the immersion. For me, the best example of that is comparing Doom 3 BFG in VR to Doom VFR. Doom VFR, don't get me wrong, is a great game, but Doom 3 BFG, in my opinion, is an excellent game. Not only has the Doom 3 BFG Space Marine discovered duct tape, but he's graduated to learning how to use both hands at the same time. The slower and more deliberate plodding pace of the game's claustrophobic corridors works best for building an almost perfect blend of mystery and suspense. Coming in at number 13, Arizona Sunshine. Wave-based zombie shooters are a dime a dozen in VR, but if you had to pick just one, this would be the one. Arizona Sunshine takes the predictable and stereotypical zombie wave-based formula and turns it on its head. The locations are bright and cheery. Think Spaghetti Western meets Badlands 2, a colorful backdrop against which the undead hordes seek to bring you to their side. Ammo is spread around in just the right proportions to always have you examining the amount of bullets left and fearing you will soon be out. While not a total spoiler, the bright and cheery game you get used to plowing through for the opening act then forces you down into dark and foreboding mine corridors where all bets are off. Now the bright sun, red and yellow hues are replaced with darkness and the echoing distant noises of the undead hordes descending upon you. Like the ammo placement, the game's pacing is pretty much bang on perfect. Never has zombie killing been more fulfilling. Coming in number 12, along with space and fantasy, history, yep, another obsession of mine. I know, a geek with far too many interests. That's the curse of my existence on this third rock from the sun. Well, in this title, you explore ancient Roman style ruins, which form the backdrop to fantastic puzzles that you attempt to solve. As far as I'm concerned, this is the premier VR puzzler across all three platforms that has yet to be beat. Puzzles are yours to focus on without distraction. Well, not counting the amazing locations that you find yourself in, but puzzles, as tough as they get, never ever feel unfair. There's usually a past experience that helps you figure out future puzzles. Definitely get this if you're into puzzlers. Hell, even if you're not. This is going to be controversial for some, but for me, it's a no-brainer. I loved Space Pirate Trainer, and I still enjoy it, but it's always felt like more of a mini-game to me than a full-game experience. Blasters of the Universe is a full VR game experience, and it takes that same classic arcade Galaga formula and applies it to VR, but it does so with better enemies, better weapons, better bosses, better pacing from its awesomely royal fromage opening that pokes fun at the classic arcade lineage, right to the corny jokes and dialogue of the game's main boss, this game is fantastic. As with other games of this type, you're actually utilizing the room scale around you realistically, not as a gimmick. 
definitely a title to pick up if you want a premier arcade blaster in VR. Next up, Assetto Corsa. If you had to pick just one virtual reality racer to take with you to that desert island, this would be the one that I urge you to take along. Project Cars 2 is very good. iRacing is fantastic, but if like me, you kind of straddle the more hobbyist than simulation enthusiast for car racing experiences, particularly in VR, this is the title that for me gets a nod over those other two titles and therefore is on my list. And of course it goes without saying, playing this title with a wheel and pedal combo set in a proper cockpit environment, guys, you may as well be racing a car. Just a fantastic example of what is to come with regards to virtual reality and racing. It's got dynamic weather, fantastic physics, and unlike the update that brought better tires to Project Cars 2, this title has had it from the get-go. All in all, a fantastic VR racer. To me, the promise of being the most widely sold VR solution and platform is that increasingly you get the attention of developers and along with that the possibility of polished AAA titles. This is in no way meant to disparage PC titles like Onward, Pavlov or Standout. All of these bring a fantastic first person multiplayer experience to PC VR options. However, Firewall Zero Hour just has that much more polish and tightness. For me, and the reason the game is even on my list, is that the pacing is almost perfect. I'm not a huge multiplayer shooter games guy, but I find this game to be extremely enjoyable. It takes most of what you enjoy about the more strategic squad-based games like Ghost Recon and Rainbow Six, which I did love, and adapts said formula to virtual reality. Playing this game on the AIM controller, truly an immersive experience as it counters the PlayStation's tracking issues by catering to its strengths, simple configuration, and point and aim mechanics. This game is selling a lot of PlayStation VR units for a reason. Definitely one to pick up if you have a PlayStation VR. Number 16, Audio Shield, a special game a rhythm game in VR that sees you blocking music with two shields in a few different environments. As with most games of this type, when you're starting out, you're probably going to feel pretty inept and clumsy, but as you grow used to the game's mechanics, you'll soon be blocking music faster than you would have ever imagined. The game features a variety of musical types for its gameplay, with the ability to add custom songs of your own. If you're the first to ever have uploaded a specific song, it will take an entire playthrough, but once done, it's ready for the game engine and for others to enjoy. Ultimately, again, if you like rhythm games and are wanting a rhythm experience in VR, this, until recently, was not only one of the only titles, easily the best rhythm VR title. And number seven. Fapping, call to arms, name aside, the only chicken you're going to be choking in this title with your grip are the touch controllers. Beat Saber is the game that for many of us dethroned Audio Shield as the premier VR rhythm game experience. Rather than blocking music, you slash your lightsabers at musical beats in multiple directions, which can change up until the moment the beat arrives in range. The experience can be as simple as you want, for all but the most mobile challenged among us to downright DDR style challenging. While it seems as if you'll only be swinging your arms around, you're also going to be moving side to side with your feet and even ducking or both or all simultaneously. Time passes quickly in Beat Saber, but the fun factor absolutely consistent throughout. A must have, the must have if you're into rhythm games. And number six, Windlands 2, a recent title, but it's already found a place not only in this top 20, but on my top 10 list through sheer force of majesty. 
This is a game that takes place on a low gravity world that's been desiccated by robotic forces, where once there was plant and green and water, there's now only sand, wind, and stone. However, the game doesn't, you know, throw brown, barren wastelands at you. Quite to the contrary, what it lacks in complex textures, it more than makes up for with brightly at times pastel shaded canyons that often stretch into magnificent vistas that you are able to explore. And just a word of warning, if you suffer from vertigo in real life and or VR, this title may have you experience that, or if you're scared of heights, that we weak need feeling associated with it. The swing mechanic a subtle masterpiece. What starts out as frustratingly complex with multiple deaths, usually resulting in you falling from great heights to smush into the scenery below, ends up becoming a skill that you get increasingly better at, but never feel like you quite master. Raw Data is a wave-based shooter that takes place in a more pure and less anarchic Blade Runner style future. So many speak highly of this game because it came at us early in the life cycle of VR and from day one early access it was as polished as any AAA title. It just didn't feel indie and the emotionless robots in the game scared the bejesus out of us, particularly in the poorly lit corporate areas that you visited throughout the game. There's multiple classes called operative profiles, each of them feels unique and balanced. The dual gun wielding bishop, the heavy demolitions boss, the katana wielding saya, or the bow and arrow elder, all of which can grow powerful but never quite feel powerful enough. These robots that you encounter, they're not just your human size 3 CPO variety, they also come in the form of towering mechs whose sole purpose is to dispatch you from your life. There's even head to head player versus player in addition to the single player. And coming in at number four, Resident Evil 7. This is a special game for me. It's part horror, part thriller, but as close as you're likely to get for some time to being in a horror movie. The psychotic family in the game is the stuff of nightmares, and the rooms and halls of their living space not only feel real, but ooze with tension. Every step you take feels like it could be your last. And then the mind games start to take over. And after a while, even the inanimate objects in this game start to feel and look sinister, as if they too want you dead. When I say it's as close as you're likely to get to being in a horror movie, I mean it. To me, that's what it felt like. It felt like I was in a world made up of the stuff of horror movies. Equal parts slasher classics and equal portion wrong turn style movies. You know, the movies where the heroes take a wrong turn and end up bumping into inbred family Psychoville. While there are some jump scares in the game, it's the tension that just exploring the world creates that almost constant feeling of dread and terror. This is a game that has turned the most alpha among us into shrieking, terrified adolescents who once again believe the boogeyman is real. Fallout 4 VR takes the fantasy world of Skyrim VR and converts it into a 1950s post-apocalyptic version of the future. Everything from the cars, the electronics, furniture, architecture is a pseudo 1950s looking future. And in this future, you are free to roam in the same open-ended way as in Skyrim, nudging yourself back to the main storyline as you wish or don't wish. So which game you prefer likely depends on your RPG desire for either fantasy or sci-fi. The only negative with regards to Fallout 4 would be performance, as it uses an enhanced version of the Skyrim engine, and with that, enhanced version, well, come some performance woes. It has a little bit more trouble with VR than titles like Skyrim, for example, designed on the older non-enhanced engine. The more you throw at it, the more things tend to slow down. 
But either way, if you've caught a rig, or you know what, you're willing to make some graphical sacrifices, do not miss out on this title. If you like RPGs of any kind and you're a fan of VR, this game has to be in your collection. Along with sci-fi, fantasy has been my other lifelong go-to. Whether through Conan the Barbarian, which I first discovered at age 8, via the still awesome Savage Sword of Conan graphic magazine, or Dungeons and Dragons, which I've played throughout my life, those both led to CRPGs and JRPGs, and during the 90s only one company was doing open world 3D RPGs, and that was Bethesda. So it's no surprise and pretty damn fitting that Bethesda would bring their franchise to VR and offer the, as of now, largest, most sprawling RPG experience you can have in VR. While mods are not officially supported, many of the special edition Skyrim mods are compatible and they deliver more of everything already awesome in the game. Graphics, items, areas, adventures. If you like RPGs and VR, then you simply cannot miss out on Skyrim VR for PC. Put simply, no other game offers this much fantasy RPG content in VR and presents it in such an open-ended way to explore as you see fit. Finally, number one, Elite Dangerous. Since I was a kid, I had an obsession with space. Sci-fi shows were a staple of that obsession. Doctor Who, Battlestar Galactica, Space 1999, Star Wars, Star Trek, Jason of Star Command. Believe me, I could go on, but let's stop there. I honestly thought when I was a kid that by now, we would be patrolling the space lanes between the planets and spaceships, and I would be a space cadet. Not in the mental sense, but in the actual sense of patrolling up there with them. Elite Dangerous is a VR cockpit game that at its best experienced with the same controls used for the in-game control renders, flight stick and throttle. With those in hand, it absolutely feels as if you are in your own spaceship. You can get around uh, walking wise within your own cockpit, all the controls rendered as if they are there, you know, like any dashboard experienced in a real car. Planet landings, spaceship landings. Yes, it's a grind fest at times, but if you're okay with, you know, wanting an experience that absolutely feels the closest I could imagine to what it would be like to fly a spaceship, Elite Dangerous is absolutely that title. It's a game I've poured thousands of hours into, and I've still barely cracked the surface on what's possible. And there you have it, guys. That's my top 20 VR games across all platforms since the launch of virtual reality. Let me know where your opinions differ. I'd love to know what games you'd have on your list. You don't have to give me a top 20, but I prefer a top 20, top five, top 10, all good, all the same. I'm just really curious. If you like this video, hit that like button, guys. Really helps push this video out. If you didn't like it, uh, I'd still like to know your opinion, but yeah, okay, fine. Go ahead, hit that dislike. All right, guys, next up, the VR show coming at you within a few hours. As always, guys, cheers.